Do you guys have a CR-10S Pro and the bed just won't heat or it won't heat consistently? Today I'm going to show you guys how to change the MOSFET on these printers that are a known failure point. The CR-10S Pro is a printer that comes in two version models and they are the V1 and the V2. This video will apply to both of them since they use the same parts for the bed. One of the common failure points for these printers that causes the bed not to heat and also causes issues with shorting out and a fire risk is the low quality DC-DC SSR modules they use. Today I'm going to show you guys how to replace that module with our MOSFET V3 without using any additional wires using the existing wiring that's in the printer. The only thing you're going to need to do is print a bracket to mount this MOSFET in the stock printer location. You're also going to need a couple M3 screws or wood screws to mount the MOSFET to the adapter plate. So let's cut over to my workbench and I'm going to show you guys how to do this conversion. So before we start, I'm going to show you guys what wires are what. Now, this is the stock DC to DC style state relay. And if you notice, it looks fine. However, on mine, you can literally just pull it off, which is not good. So this guy is broken, we're going to be replacing it. Now we are going to need to rewire the one wire that comes from the bed. To figure out what that wire is, you can follow your bed cable here, which is this thicker sleeved one. And it will have a total of five wires coming out of it. You'll have the two thermistor lines, a ground, and then two power lines. If you look here, we have one leg going to the V minus. And then we also have a thick cable going up to the solid state relay on the V plus because the MOSFET we're using switches the negative. We're going to need to move this V minus cable over to the V plus. So I'm going to show you guys right now how to change all this out and do the rewiring. And it's not going to take that long. So let's go ahead and disconnect the wires from the factory unit here. You're going to need a Phillips screwdriver to do this. And this can go right in the trash. Next, we're going to take the SSR off. If your SSR has not fallen off like mine, you can still get to these screws. But these are the two we need to take out. Now, as you can see here, I have my wires zip tied. I'm going to cut these so I can easily work with the wires going to the bed. So I move the ribbon cable out of the way. You can see here we have a red wire that goes directly to the loom that feeds the bed and we have the black wire. There's also the one thicker line here that fed the stock solid state relay. We're going to go ahead and take the cover off of the power supply terminals and just switch these two wires. So at this point, the black wire going to your bed should be connected to V+. The red wire that went to the factory solid state relay should be on V minus. And then you should have the red wire that goes directly to the, your bed. Go ahead and snip the crimp ends off of the bed wire and off of the one that goes to the power supply. Next, go ahead and unscrew the terminal here that fed the stock solid state relay. Now we're going to need to prepare the cable ends here. Go ahead and strip the end of the wire. Give it a little twist. Now, if you have crimp ferrules, go ahead and put these on. If not, put the bare wire into the terminal of the new MOSFET when we install that. I have crimp ferrules, so I'm gonna go ahead and put those on these wires. If you guys do not have a crimp ferrule set, we do sell them in our store. So now that we have the stock one removed, we're gonna go ahead and put the mounting bracket in the place of the old one. When you put this side on, make sure to slip this underneath so this is touching the chassis. Now we're gonna take four M three by eight screws and attach the new MOSFET just like this to the mounting plate. Make sure to put the terminals on the right side here like I have. So 
So we have two red wires here. This is the one that goes to the power supply, and that one will go into the very top one here, marked power minus. Now the other red wire that goes to the bed goes into output minus. So last we're going to do is wire up the cable that came with the MOSFET to the bed terminal. And then we're going to need to take another wire from the bed plus terminal and put it into either one of these two terminals to give the MOSFET power. So what I did was I cut this to length here for the MOSFET. And I'm going to take one more red wire and twist it in with this one to go to one of these two terminals. Go ahead and put them into the terminal on the board. Make sure to get the positive and negative correct. I got the positive in. Let's go ahead and put the negative in. And the last wire here goes into either one of these two. And just like that, our wiring is done. Now, let me explain what's going on here because you're probably looking at this like this looks weird and you're correct. On this MOSFET, these two center connections here pass through the power from here to here. And it also gives it a power to drive the MOSFET, but it doesn't pull much current. The current is going through this top to the bottom one. So it's switching the negative line. On the stock board, the positive terminal always has power going out of it and the negative one is switched. So we're able to just take a little piece of wire from the positive and then when the bed MOSFET on the board turns on, it sends the ground to here, which then turns this big guy on, which handles all the bed current. Now, if you were doing a custom printer build, you would just go ahead and run two wires from your power supply into here and then run both the bed wires into this. That's the easiest way. But since this is a retrofit and this printer is a little bit different since the wire lengths are not the same on the bed, this is the best way to do it without having to crimp on and recable everything. And this works perfectly fine. So we're going to go ahead and test it on this MOSFET on the back. There's an LED that turns on when the bed's heating. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to test it right now. And I've moved my LCD to the bottom here so we can see everything happening. So I'm going to go ahead and tell my bed to heat. You can see the light on the board turned on and you can see the red light on the MOSFET turned on. And if we look here, the bed is now heating. There's no real current going over this wire, which is why we can do this the way we did it. So there we go. This printer's bed would not heat at all because the stock one burnt up. You can see here we're heating up with no issues now with our MOSFET in place. And just like that, we got rid of this thing that broke in quite a weird way. And now my bed's heating again on my Sierra 10S Pro. So if you need a MOSFET for your printer project, go ahead and click the link in the video description. These little guys handle up to 30 amps of power. Included with the MOSFET, you also will get the STL files, including a nice little 2020 case to bolt it onto extrusion than any printer. You also get the STL for the universal mount that I used, and also a mount that we designed to replace the other Creality style MOSFETs that you'll find in like the CR10 original series and the Ender 5 Plus and a couple of other models. I hope this video helps you out, and as always, happy printing. Thanks for checking us out.